Bon, ça, on va l'enlever, il faut. On en direct déjà On est tout à fait prêt. Oui mmh. On est prêt Hi everyone, welcome to this live demo session at Ferrandi Paris. I'm Barbara, I'm here today with bread baking chef Didier Chapu. How are you, chef? Very well. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everyone. Welcome at Ferrandi. We are doing today almond croissant and uh, we'll learn more about toppings and how to use um, croissants that you might have saved from a past brunch or you might have eaten and um, you, there were some that were left and you want to know what you can do with them. So what do we start and what do we need for this um, session today, Chef? Alors, first of all, of course, we need croissant. Okay, so this croissant can be fresh or they can be whole. Huh? That's croissant you can have uh, from uh, your breakfast from two or three days ago. So they can, if they are a little bit stale, it's really not a problem. It's a croissant amande. It's a technique to reuse croissant we not eat uh, before. Uh, we need a light syrup. So we're going to see how to do a light syrup. The, the same syrup that we're going to use to make baba or rum or to, make, uh, to soak the biscuits of a cake. And we're going to see a very classic and base of French bread baking and pastry uh, cream. So we're going to see the almond cream. It's a technique how to do a good almond cream. And this recipe today is for what kind of level of cook who can make it? Alors, what is actually difficult is to make the croissant. So the, croissant, the croissant, if you want to make the croissant, that it will be the difficult part. But actually, today we're going to just see how to transform this croissant in croissant amande. So this part is very easy and it's really for uh, dedicated for beginners. Okay, great. So maybe I'll be able to reproduce this. Then. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I have no doubt about your capacity. <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> so, okay, so we start with the light syrup. Yes, we're going to start with the light syrup. So we call the light syrup light because we can make also heavy syrup. So the, there's a lot of different density in, uh, in sugar proportion when we make syrup. Here is the syrup we're going to use to dip different products uh, inside. So we don't want a product very, very sweet. So we're going to use a proportion of two thirds, one third. Two thirds of water, one third of sugar. Of course, depending of you, on taste, depending of what you like, you can make a syrup a little bit more sweet and uh, increase the proportion of sugar or decrease. That depends on your, uh, your own taste, okay? So very, very easy recipe. So we're gonna just take a pan. We're gonna pour first the water, okay? So that's the, the only trick of this recipe, okay? So you begin to pour the water in the pan and not the sugar. If you begin to put the sugar, the time of dilution of, uh, of the sugar during the cooking of the syrup, you can have a beginning of caramelization. Okay. okay. And so, the water there is completely cold normal. Yes, cold water. Actually, that doesn't matter. You can use uh, hot water. Okay. Uh, the objective here, the goal is just to dilute the sugar. Okay. So we put the sugar. No need to stir. No need to whip. Okay. So we put the sugar. No need to stir. No need to whip. Okay. You just put that on your induction and you bring to boil okay so it's gonna take 30 seconds okay when you see the syrup boiling that means the sugar is totally uh, dissolved in the in the water and you can stop and we are using today for seven to eight croissants for this syrup we'll be using 100 grams of water and 50 grams of sugar and of course you can flavor this syrup with the ingredients you want. You can put some liquor, liquors inside. You can put some blossom. You can put some zest, uh, of citrus zest, for example. And you can uh, really flavor and play with a different flavor to uh, have your own uh, specific croissant amount. That's great. So we can have many kinds of variation, even in the syrup. Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. Great. Alors, after we're going to start to make the, uh, the crème d'amande, so the almond cream. Alors, almond cream, It's an uh, easy recipe for the proportion. So you're going to have the same amount of butter, of sugar, of eggs, and of almond powder. That's the base, really, of the recipe. And the goal of this recipe is to make an emulsion. So we're going to try to mix these, these different ingredients to make a little bit like a mayonnaise, 
to have a smooth and, uh, and yes, a very smooth and not shiny cream. Okay, so, and the proportions that we have today. So we have 100 grams of butter. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the consistency of Alors, the butter? What is important when we make this uh, recipe is to have all the ingredients at room temperature. If your butter is too cold, if you just take out from the fridge, the cream can split. Huh? So as we said, we want to make a beautiful emulsion. So what is important is to have a temperature at uh, uh, your butter at room temperature. And you, we need so to have this texture of, we call that in French, pomade. Okay, so the pomade that the cream can use for your skin, so re redirect your skin. So we don't want a melted butter, but we want a very, very soft butter. Okay, so that is important. If you melt the butter, you break the structure of the butter, and even after if you stir and whip a lot, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna not rebuild the structure of the butter. And even if your cream is beautiful at the end of the mixing, during the baking, the cream is gonna leak and you're gonna have, uh, all the cream will go on the tray and not on your, in your croissant, okay? So okay. very, very soft butter, but not melted. Okay, good. Next, we have 100 grams of almond powder, which mm -hmm. is this one, right? Yes. Okay, so this is the almond powder here. Um, and you mentioned earlier that we might switch for perhaps a pistache powder, for yes, example. Yes, so you, you can play with all one. the dry fruits powder. So you can use uh, grated coconut, you can use pistachio, you can use hazelnuts. There are some uh, bakers who also use a powder of gingerbread. So the gingerbread, a little bit stale also, they reduce this gingerbread in, uh, in powder and they use uh, this base to make your, their, their cream. Uh, same thing with speculos. Okay, so you can, there's a look. See at Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, next we have eggs. So we also have 100 grams of eggs. So it's very easy in terms of uh, the proportions. Yeah, proportions. It doesn't change much. You can't so make mistakes. Full eggs. I hope I'm not dropping this. Mm -hmm. um, then we have five grams of cornstarch, which yes. is this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so cornstarch. This is also known in some countries like Brazil, my home country, or France as maizena. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, we have a secret ingredient from Chef Didier, which is 10 grams of rum. Yeah, just to add a little twist to the, to the recipe and to make the recipe uh, uh, more greedy. Okay, awesome. So what do we start? We start with the butter? Yes. Okay, so the butter, once again, very important to have something very soft. So, if it's not soft enough, huh, you can uh, work it a little bit with uh, with your uh, spatula or with uh, micro the microwave. So here I'm gonna use, which is very practical, a marise, huh, which is a spatula, which make also the job of a scraper at the same time. Okay. So first of all, we're gonna add the sugar. You put everything at once. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna add the dry elements of the recipe first, okay? So the sugar, then the almond powder, and after we're gonna add little by little the eggs. Voilà, so I just tear to mix, you mix the butter. everything until it's incorporated. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, just to have something homogeneous. Okay. Then I had the almond powder. The almond powder. Everything at once again. Mm -hmm. okay. Alors, I use uh, a spatula and not a whisk because when we make, uh, when we add the almond powder, the cream becomes stiff. And if we use a uh, whisk, the cream will be blocked in the center of the whisk. Mm. Alors, eventually, you can add, uh, you can use a whisk at the really end of the of the mixing, at the end of the eggs. It can help to finish your emulsion and to have uh, cream very very smooth but at the beginning use a spatula it will be really really easier okay that seems voilà. easy so far so far easy. <laughs> i'm not doing you, you could do the demonstration voilà. not sure everyone would watch this <laughs> okay okay maybe. and then we're gonna add the eggs. Okay, maybe just let's show them what it looks like. So you guys can see, this is what we're looking for in terms of consistency. 
before adding the eggs. Alors, the eggs has, we're gonna make a small quantity of almond cream. It's better to whip it them first. Okay. okay. When we are in production, we can make, we make a big uh, quantity. So we can, we add little by little, but it's one egg per one egg. Okay. Here, as it's a small quantity, it's better to whip the eggs. And like that, we'll be able to add the eggs really little by little. Voilà, so the goal is to make an emulsion uh, between the fat of the butter and the humidity, the moisture of the egg whites. Can you explain what is emulsion to our viewers? Now, the emulsion, it's a, a technique to link water and fat together. And that's really the difference between a vinaigrette and a mayonnaise. A vinaigrette, you mix oil, uh, vinegar, you, uh, salt, uh, pepper, you mix that, it's stable for a few seconds, and immediately after, it begins to split. The mayonnaise, immediately after, it begins to split. The mayonnaise, you mix it, and it stays smooth, okay? So in, the, in these two recipes, we're gonna use the lecithin of the egg yolk. Huh? So the, the lecithin, it's a natural emulsifier, which gonna take the water, take the, the fat, and gonna uh, link these two products to have uh, a cream very okay. smooth. Okay. Because I always see in restaurants emulsion and I always mm -hmm. find it so fancy, but I never know what it means. <laughs> yes, yeah, so when you see emulsion in a restaurant, even now they make I'll a foam of that and uh, yeah, but uh, we need emulsifier so to link the different uh, elements of the recipe, the fat and the, and the water. Okay, interesting. So each time you had eggs, you stir and we need to have something smooth smooth and not shiny. If you see the cream begins to shine, that means the, the, your emulsion is not well done and that means the fat and the water begins to separate. Huh? If, uh, if you have a shiny cream, that means you have free... You're doing wrong. Yeah, and you have, that means you have free what begins to separate. Huh? If, uh, if you have a shiny cream, that means you have free... You're doing wrong. Yeah, and you have, that means you have free water and the shyness comes from the water. So you have some particles of water not totally incorporated in the cream. Guys, in the end of this live, we will um, we will show our email for any kind of additional information you might need, or if you have questions, feel free to reach out. I can ask them to Chef Didier, and we'd be more than happy to help you to reproduce this almond crescent and. Uh, perhaps your own specific toppings. Ah, so we had little by little, and it's better to uh, take your time to add little by little. If you put too much quantity of eggs, of course, it will be more difficult to, uh, to mix and to cooperate properly in the cream. And this recipe we can eat immediately after we finish? Yeah. Okay, good. Mm. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Alors, the crème d'amande, it's a base of a lot of uh, recipe of pastry in, uh, in France. Huh? So you can use that to make what is the most famous in France is a galette des rois. Huh? So it's a two disc of puff pastry filled uh, with crème d'amande. Huh? And we uh, eat that for the epiphany, so uh, during all the months of January maybe the most successful uh, pastry in French in France. Really? Oh, I think, yeah. Um, and we, that's a base of uh, to make tart also. Huh? So if you want to make uh, a tart with fresh fruits or uh, so you're going to make uh, in the shell of uh, dough, of tart dough, but you're going to pipe a little bit of crème d'amande. You can make, uh, yes, feuilleté, you can make... Uh, a pear. Almond pear Yes, what tarts. we call bordaloo. It's so good. Mm. Mm. You see, some people are built like to be making like you. Others are built for eating. 
<laughs> we are, it's uh, all we about need, teamwork. Exactly. Exactly. We have everybody has its own speciality. <laughs> exactly. Voilà. So maybe you can show to the camera. Huh? So we need a dough smooth. Huh? So it's not perfectly smooth, of course, just because of the, the almond powder, the granular, granulometry of the almond powder. And when you take your cream like that, it must hold. Okay. If the, the, the cream doesn't stand like that on your spatula, if the cream uh, leak a little bit, that means you need to whip a little bit more to, uh, to make the emulsion. Okay, so if at this point the cream is not perfect, what you can do is to warm up a little bit, and very often the, dough, the cream can split your uh, like a bain marie, and you uh, you whip a little bit. And otherwise, at this stage, you can use your whisk and you try to incorporate some fast. hair, yeah. uh, and the, the incorporation of hair will help to make the, the emulsion. The incorporation of air helps the emulsion. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. It's a chemical reaction, actually. Uh, so we don't go too far in the definition, but it's uh, oxidation and uh, okay. uh, the different particles of the... This brings me back to high school. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I think, a good point of fair on the course, actually. Is we don't teach just the techniques, but we teach also the to process. the students the process and to understand the process. Yeah. Like that, we can... Uh, well, that's, you, you won't be able to you won't work like robots, but you will really understand all the reaction. Yeah, no, that's super important, especially because sometimes when you go back home, if you live in a different country, the weather might be different. There might be a more humid or mm -hmm. more. And the quality of the raw material can and change the a lot. Product, huh? absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know the processes. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So that's the base of the almond cream. Okay. After we have two optional ingredients, okay. So we're gonna have here a little bit of cornstarch, okay. So the cornstarch is we're gonna just second so optional. optional, yeah. We're gonna just second a little bit the cream, okay. So if you have a doubt on the quality of your cream, or if you want to have a very stable cream during the baking, for example, the cornstarch will help. To, uh, to will prevent the cream from leaking during the baking. And it doesn't affect flavor or no. anything. The cornstarch it's not a, uh, doesn't have taste, and it's a very very small quantity, so it's, uh, the texture of the cream will be the same for the for the customer. It's just five grams. Yeah. Okay. And after we're gonna so flavor our cream with rum. Uh, so with rum, but you can use different kinds of liquors. Uh, you can use different blossom. Huh? If you want to use orange blossom, rose blossom, it's totally possible too. I think if you want to add it's, some citrus zest, yeah. citrus juice also, it's possible. At this time, you can also add uh, spices. Huh? If you want to make a cinnamon uh, cream, a cinnamon, a cardamom, anise, uh, you can add whatever you want. And actually, in France, depending on the region where you are, in east of France, very often we're going to have cinnamon here. In south of France, we're going to have uh, anise powder. Oh, uh, so that's, uh, that's, a, anise. that's really a base. But depending on uh, the area you where you are, you're going to find different, uh, different flavoring. Voila. Great. Let's check this out. It's amazing. I can even try <laughs> Here you go. Sing everything. Okay, so this is ready. That is ready. Okay, perfect. So we have the light syrup, the creme d'amande. So now we can begin to fill really the croissant. Alors, first things, we're gonna prepare two piping bags with the almond cream. Alors, one we're gonna use with a, a pipe. A tip, sorry. So this tip is called chemin de fer. So maybe we can show it to the camera. Uh, so it's called right, uh, right road uh, because it's uh, like uh, we have all these teeth who look like a little bit of right road. <laughs> and we use this uh, kind of tip to make to spread the cream very, very thin. Okay, so to not have a, a very thick coat of cream. So first, I put 
my tip in the bottom of the packing bag. I'm gonna fold the piping bag over my hand. And you can take your cream and scrap your cream on your uh, along your hand, it's possible, which, which is more easy when we begin, it's to use a liter like that. Oh, that's second. a good trick. Yeah. Because I always make a mess when I try to use it. Mm -hmm. Voila, and like that, you can hold with your first hand your bowl. So you just have to put your cream inside. Do you have a specific quantity that you need? No. no. Uh, it's easier when we are beginner to not put too much cream in the piping bag. Because when, when we have a lot, it's more difficult to, to hold, to manipulate, and you're gonna need a, a very powerful hand to push. Okay. And you only cut this after? After, yes. Okay. Like that, there's no risk for the cream to go out when you fill it. Okay, so when you are the first time you use the piping bag, you leave the piping bag closed. And when it's open, to avoid the cream to pass through the, the tip, you can fold the piping bag like that. Ah, okay. okay like that, I'm the cream is so, not inside. Okay, I've been doing everything wrong. <laughs> You should take a course at Sharon. I know. I need to. <laughs> My family would be very happy. <laughs> so after, with the scrapper, I'm going to push the cream to the bottom of the piping bag. OK. And then I can cut the back, the bottom of the piping bag. OK. So you cut it with a knife. Yeah. A knife or scissors. Huh? Moving off what you have. Et voilà. So you, this piping bag is ready. So after you just have to take it between your finger like that. So the thumb and on the one side, the your hands in the other side. And after we roll the piping bag around the uh, index finger. Okay. Okay. So that's the first piping bag, but maybe you don't have this tip. Okay. So we're gonna show you how to do the same thing without. Okay, that's the tip. That's going to be practical. Maybe, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe everybody. after some classes at Ferranzi, we will all buy the different tips. <laughs> exactly. And is the almond cream something that you can, for example, let's say, this will be a lot even for the quantity we are doing now? Mm -hmm. Could we put it in the fridge for yes. using later? Yes, almond cream has a good uh, preservation. Huh? You can keep it for one week in, the, in your fridge. One week? Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm. Syrup too, huh? the syrup. Uh, you can keep it, uh, you can make a lot and keep it in the, in the fridge for a long time. Huh? That's, uh, that's, that's, this product has a good preservation. Okay, that's good too. Voila, and then with that, without the tip, it's better to use a scissors. Uh, and we're going to just cut the bottom of the piping bag. Okay, alors. Now, now the fun begins. We're gonna take the croissant. May okay. I just make a comment? Mm -hmm. Can you see how big this is? <laughs> this looks just delicious. I can't wait to try this. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, a croissant we made with uh, my students uh, yesterday. It's a pure sourdough croissant, so there's no yeast inside. So it's why we have this size. Has a, the, the sourdough is able to make the proofing of the product, oh but it's better to make big breads or big viennoiseries. It's the, the sourdough doesn't work very well when we make small, small, small pieces. Okay. It needs a little bit of quantity. 
I can't wait to try them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's a sourdough croissant. Huh? So we made them yesterday. We left we leave them for the night. Uh, we left them for the night outside. So as it's a sourdough croissant, they are still fresh huh? because the sourdough increases the preservation of the of the products. And so I'm gonna cut the croissant too, but I take care to not cut totally. Huh? So I try to keep the space of uh, two three centimeters uh, on the left of the croissant. So I just want to cut enough to be able to cut, to open the croissant in two. Like that, I can put the syrup, pipe the, the almond cream. Uh, but I don't cut totally in two because otherwise, with the coat of cream we're going to put in the middle, the two parts of the croissant gonna, will slide. Croissant because it starts falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, when you butter. eat a croissant, you don't have uh, pieces of croissant everywhere. <laughs> Not a good sign. Yeah, if you're on a diet, don't eat this. Otherwise, you'll be busted. <laughs> you get busted. Voilà. Alors, we're going to take the syrup and with a brush, we're going to brush the croissant. Alors, depending of the texture of your croissant, you can put more or less syrup. If they are very dry, the, uh, you're going to use more syrup to rehydrate really the croissant and to have a... Not to have, we don't want to have a soggy, soggy croissant, but we want to have a, a melting croissant, a melting texture. Up. So it won't be too moisty, just oh, okay. There are some baker and some customer who like that when it's very, very humid, very, very wet. The problem is, uh, by the croissant after it's very, very flat. Mm. Okay, so it's a, it's a choice to uh, to have, huh? how to do. Uh, that's possible. Some people love that, but yes, the look after of the croissant it's a, I love it's croissant a bit with less uh, butter, consistent. Just putting more and more. Yeah. Do uh, that's a mistake we make very often at the beginning. Yeah? We want to make things more greedy, and we think uh, when we had more, it would be better. Yeah. But sometimes too much is too You're much. too excited. <laughs> <laughs> and do we have to wait after we put the syrup or no? No. Okay. No, no. We can start immediately after. Alors. I'm going to uh, use the first uh, piping bag we prepare, so with the tip. Uh, so as we explained, I put, take the piping bag between my thumb and my hand like that, very close of the of the cream to have strength and to have a, uh, to be able to keep a pressure on the cream. I roll the piping bag around my uh, index finger, and then I gonna pipe. Do you the cream. push it exactly? So I just make a light pressure here. I push, I push, I push, I push, I push, I stop, and I burn. Okay. Looks easy. It is easy. <laughs> it's well explained, so. <laughs> and the same thing on the top. Okay, so you put it on the top too. Yeah. Mm. And it will help, so that's for the flavor. It's gonna help also to stick the topping. If there is no cream, absolutely no cream on the top, but the, the almonds we're gonna put on the top or the crumble. Everything or will fall. Well. Exactly, okay. okay. So it's kind of like also like a glue on mm -hmm. the top. And so what we explain, don't put too much cream uh, because if, you put too much cream, everything will gonna leak during the baking. And so it's not useful to uh to overdo it. Yeah. Okay. And if they were going to add some topping on here, would they do it now or after? Uh, we're gonna do that now. Okay. Yeah. And the quantity is very impressive because you got almost everything out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Voilà. 
So now we're going to add the topping. So very traditionally, we had almonds, almond, sliced almond or almond sticks. And so carefully, we're going to try to stick the almonds directly on. Okay, cream. so you only put the almonds where there is the cream. Yes, so the way the almonds doesn't stick and will fall on the tray. Okay. And so the goal is to have a texture very wet, melted in the center of the croissant and to have a crust really outside, uh, to have uh, something crunchy outside. Okay, this is making me hungry. <laughs> Just a few minutes to wait. Don't worry. So if you have tea time or if you have you were about to have breakfast, this is a good idea. Yeah. And this croissant, like that, you can keep it in the freezer. Okay. So you can make a lot of croissant, a lot of uh, in the freezer? Uh, yeah. And after you can put it, put them directly from the freezer to the oven. You bake during uh, 10, 15 minutes, and you have a croissant ready for your uh, for your uh, breakfast, for your tea time, for your uh, for what, your snack. What temperature do we bake? Alors we're gonna bake at 170 between, Celsius. Yeah, Celsius between 170, 180. That depends of the of the oven, uh, and you need to. Alors if it's a fresh croissant, you bake during 10 minutes. Uh, so 10 minutes that's the right information, and after you can play a little bit with the temperature depending of your oven. So it would be more or less 170. And if they are frozen, it takes a little bit more time, of course. And so it's going to be more 14, 15 minutes. Okay. Voilà. So we don't spray, spread cream everywhere because we preview that the cream during the baking going to leak mm. a little bit. Huh? So we, uh, don't worry if it's just in the center for the moment. But it's going to cover totally the croissant the month after baking. Voilà. And so that's when it's done like that so as we said so, or directly into the oven or in the freezer okay. to, so this uh, is ready for the oven yeah exactly okay so i would i'm gonna just show you how to do with the other piping bag without the tip oh that's a good idea <laughs> so So you baked this yesterday with mm -hmm. um, students from which program? From bread baking program. So the, the, the 16 weeks. The program. 16 weeks program. Yeah. Okay, the intensive professional program. Exactly. Okay, good. So we are at the end of the of the course now of, the, of this, this 16 weeks. So we are very focused on sourdough. So they they work uh, a lot with uh, sourdough bread and sourdough viennoiserie. Huh? So. We made that uh, yesterday, and we're going to make sourdough brioche panton next week. <gasps> panton? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, the, uh, that's uh, the product we do at the end of the, form of the course, yes. Because to work with sourdough, but you need really to develop your feeling, your communication with the dough. Uh, it's important to, uh, yes, to be able to feel what the sourdough needs, and it's a living product. And today, my students are going to have this afternoon uh, a creativity uh, exercise. So at the end of the course, man, the students have to create uh, their own bread, their own viennoiserie. And uh, they, they have to transform one of these products in a snacking product. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Can I stop by? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Welcome. What was the most creative you've seen so far? Or one that was remarkable? Uh, uh, actually, it's always very interesting to exercise because it's a mix of French technique and uh, their own culture. They come from all around the world. So uh, we can have uh, things very, very different and very uh, with different, uh, yes, with different flavors, different influences, different technique. Um, so um, actually, they have all their own personality and that's uh, the, what is really important, interesting. 
and they have also uh, the students have also a video to prepare with their uh, art class uh, with their art teacher uh, to present their 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 production. So the, it will be very uh, oh, that's super funny. interesting. Yeah, <laughs> Alors, if you don't have a tip for your piping bag, so we're gonna make exactly the same thing. Just we're gonna try to work with the piping bag very close of the products. If you work high, you're gonna have a big coat. If you work close, you're gonna spread more easily the cream on the, to the side, okay? So you're gonna work close of your product. Huh? My piping bag even touch the crumb of the croissant, mm -hmm. like that. Okay. And like that, you're gonna spread a thin coat. I'll show you guys in a second. Voilà, so you put your piping bag very close of your crumb and you spread. Do you have to push a little bit harder? Or no. no, just the same. That's exactly the same. Okay. Just when you we work like that, sometimes the cream can go a little bit on the on the edges of the of the piping bag. That's the, the, the only problem. Is it easier for beginners to buy the tip and use it, or is it the same? Uh, you're gonna be more um, consistent with uh, with, the, with the tip. Okay. And it will be easier to have exactly the same product with the same feeling. When we begin, that's true. That uh, without the piping, the piping bag, yes, that can be. I just finish that. The quantity of uh, of cream you're gonna put on the croissant can change it a bit. So as we had big croissant, we have a little bit of to fill the well, last the one. Quantity we have today is for seven to eight. Exactly. So, so those are... are eight, so it's exactly what we expected. Allez, so we cover with. Uh, the almonds are for the toppings. You can play also, and you don't. Uh... You could use nuts, for example, other yeah. nuts. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, Hazel we nuts. use. Mm -hmm. okay. You can use uh, whole fruits uh, if you want. Could you put chocolate? Alors, chocolate, not all the chocolates, because the chocolate will uh, melt, uh, melt during the baking. Okay. So a uh, chocolate, uh, not too rich in uh, cocoa butter. Okay, more. Rich in dry elements of cocoa powder, too rich in uh, cocoa butter. Okay, more rich in dry elements of cocoa powder. That is possible. The kind of chocolate we use for pain au chocolat, for example, or for brioche, that you can use. Could you use raisins? Mm -hmm. Alors, yes, raisins, just things that you're gonna bake that after. So we have to rehydrate the raisins first. Okay. okay. Otherwise, they will be very, very dry. Okay. Interesting. But you can use uh, also, for example, we see during the course how to make uh, caramelized almonds. Okay. So we put the same quantity of sugar, of uh, water, and of almonds in a pan. You cook that. Uh, little by little, the water will disappear in steam, and we're gonna. Uh, so we're gonna make a caramel, and little by little, but we're gonna uh, have a coat of caramel all around the, the almonds. Okay. Nice. You can put also crumble. Huh? So in the lab, we have also a crumble in mise en place, and huh? so ready to use. So we make a crumble. We make a crumble. We flatten very thin on the tray. We pre-cook a little bit in the oven. Huh? After we break them in, in small pieces, and we all we always have. Uh, a box of crumble ready to use in the lab like that, but you can sprinkle uh, that on the top of your croissant or amande uh, to have something a little bit more crunchy. Nice. And how, so we bake it for 10, 15 minutes? And... Yes, so we're gonna bake during 10 minutes because it's a fresh croissant. Right. Okay. 10 minutes at 170 
So when do you consider the croissant not to be fresh anymore? After how many hours but if, or days? No, it's, it's just fresh for me in this case means if it's are frozen or not. That just means that the croissant, you make the, you, you make the filling of the croissant and you begin to uh, bake immediately after. Okay, so it's a fresh croissant. Uh, if filling and baking just after. Okay. okay, so it's not about when the croissant was produced. Yes, yes, okay. yes. It's a fresh croissant almond. Okay, not uh, not frozen. Okay. Okay. So now let's taste uh, your yes, the product. <laughs> and we're gonna just clean a little bit the table. This is a good habit to have when mm -hmm. you're baking and cooking. Always clean your station. All right. That is a sentence we repeat a lot in the lab. You do something, you finish something, you clean, and after you restart. Et voilà, what you have after baking. Oh my God. And after so we you just sift a... a little bit of icing sugar on the yeah. surface. This smells really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, they are the perfect uh, temperature of the uh, degustation. And they are just a little bit uh, warm. And so you hear the noise uh, of, the, of this crust of, uh, yeah. of the almond cream and the sliced almond on the, on the surface. But inside, you can see it's still very, very wet and melted. Oh, Maybe just... yes, it will be easier for you. God, this... That's very, <laughs> very this uh, two different textures that we uh, expect on this recipe. Okay, uh, cheers. cheers. <laughs> you didn't bring the coffee. Next time I'll make my cappuccino. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my my best my best uh, piece of art in the kitchen so far. <laughs> This is really good. I mm. wish you could you could eat this over the the screen, really. And really, that's um. So we hope you enjoyed the session. Um, it's been a pleasure. We at Ferranti Paris are very happy to share this demo with you guys. If you have questions about our different programs, we have international programs in bread baking for beginners or for a little bit more experienced professionals. Feel free to reach out. You see in the screen our contact information, and we wish you a great day. And if you reproduce this, feel free to share on Instagram and hashtag Ferrandi Paris. See you soon. Bye, guys. See Thank you soon, Ferrandi. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>